So this is going to just be a little bit of practice um, on inheritance, yeah, on class inheritance, you know. Not so difficult. Just going to make a class, uh, we'll call it, oh, I don't know, vehicles, should we say? Yeah. And we'll define an initialization of this class. Remember, always got to use self in every single function defined inside of a class, including the initialization. And here we can choose some arguments uh, that we want to use to set our initialized um, attributes of this class. Right. So I'm going to say, I don't know, make and mpg, which stands for miles per gallon. And we're going to say that self.make is equal to make, oops, and self.mpg is equal to mpg. Okay, easy enough. Now let's define a setter method, set all, because I want to be able to set everything, right? And I'll have to use self, I have to use make, and I have to use mpg as an argument. And I'm going to say that self.make is equal to make self dot mpg is equal to mpg easy enough so we've got our set method and then we need to get a getter method okay and i want to get a method that gets all um because we're not changing anything the only argument we need here is self and i don't really know why that did that no reason thought it was no reason and we're going to say that a is equal to I don't know, self dot self dot make and B is equal to self dot mpg. Actually, we're going to print this all out. Uh, so I'm actually going to say that the string of this is equal to that. All right. I'm going to say the string of this is equal to that. Um, I could return, you know, a concatenation of a and b with a few other string variables but i want to use um the backslash n character to signify a new line so i'm actually going to use print instead um but you know return would be better and you know you could set your own individual getter method so i'm going to say the make is uh, whatever the make is plus um a plus new line character I'm not sure if the new line character is actually going to work to be honest but i'm pretty sure it will new line a plus space there and we're going to say the mpg is a couple spaces and we're going to put b and i mean we could put new line there's not really a need to print new line but we'll just print it anyway Makes things neat and tidy. Right, so let's run this. There doesn't seem to be any errors reported by uh, the Spider console. Excellent. So, why don't we make an object of type vehicle? All right, so we'll say car1. And we'll say car1 is equal to vehicles. Oh, sorry, the class is actually called vehicles, not vehicle. Um, what can the make be? We'll call it a odd because we can't call it an f-o-r-d um because well i don't want to get sued I think the miles per gallon is 900 okay that seems a little bit ridiculous but just bear with me and we're going to get all okay i'm going to get all there and then we're going to set all so I'll just run this first, just to make sure this works. And then we're going to get all the attributes. So the make is God, the MPG is 900. Ah, there's a little space there. There doesn't need to be. So I'm just going to trim that off, refresh that. Just, you know, improve things where you can. You know, always work to improve things where you can. I didn't need to, but I just thought I would anyway. Oops. Um. And that hasn't really made any kind of difference at all. Okay. Ah, yeah, it has. There we go. Running it again has made a difference. So there you are. Anyways, all that shows is the getter method works, which is brilliant. You know, that's all I wanted. 
and now I want to see that the setter method works. So we're going to set all. Um, I'm going to set the make to be a gourd, the same as it was before. And the miles per gallon, I mean 900 miles per gallon in uh, the year 2019, it just seems ridiculous, even for some crazy hybrid vehicles. So we're going to put a more realistic miles per gallon. We're going to say 23 miles per gallon, okay? And in order to see that the set all has actually worked here, uh, we're going to use get all to have a look at this here. And we're going to use set all again. And we're going to change both uh, both the make to a gear and the miles per gallon to 32. All right. So let's just set all first of all. And we'll get all, and we just want to see that we can change just one attribute. And we that's, that, that's exactly how we've set it. So we can see that it's working at least for the miles per gallon uh, attribute. But really, we want to set it for both attributes. So we want to test both attributes, really. And I'm just going to copy and paste the get all to make sure it's worked for both attributes and not just one attribute. And we should get third and 32 as the uh, attribute values. And there we are. So we've seen that our get all method works, that our set all method works. So we're now satisfied more or less that the vehicles class is functional. That's that's absolutely great. Now, the next thing that we've got to do is, you know, make an inherited uh, class, a class that inherits the vehicles class. And we're going to call this class cars. So we're going to say class cars. Okay, and we're going to say, oops, cars has to pass the argument vehicles. So this now inherits, this class now inherits all of these methods, uh, functions, sorry, and it inherits these, the initialization along with these two attributes, right? So that means I don't have to copy and paste all of this code into this. I just put the argument in and we get inheritance there. All right. So we're going to define print cars. And we're just going to use self there. And we're going to say get all. We're going to say self dot get all. Right, and we're also going to print first of all this vehicle is a car, it has the following attributes and values. Copy and paste that. And we're going to say car2 is equal to cars. We're going to set this here to be the make. We'll call it a MIG MIG. I don't know if that's a real maker car. Probably isn't. 44 miles per gallon. And we're going to try and use this new function on it. Okay. So we'll say car2.print cars and we should get the get all method and the print method and then at once so here we are we've got this vehicle is a car it has the following attributes and values there we are and it tells you the make is a mig mig and the mpg is whatever the mpg is there we are not the neatest uh function but you know it's not the the point wasn't to uh, make a neat function the point was just to show that i can make a new function in here and you see how this self dot get all is uh, using the get all method from here now it's referring to the self and then it's saying self use this method and self is car2 of object ca type cars okay um and it's also this also demonstrates that it can use the get all method but 
me saying that and you not understanding this isn't great. So we're just going to use the get all method so you can satisfy that that works individually outside of the print cars method. Okay. Um, the set all method will also work. I'm not going to use it though, actually. Now then, let's try and use the print cars function on car one. Let's see if it works. It hasn't worked. And the reason why it hasn't worked is because it has no attribute print cars and it also has no function called print cars. So what it looks for first when you use the dot notation on an object of a class type is if it has an attribute um, with the same name as, you know, whatever you've given it in dot notation. And it, there's no attribute here called print cars. OK, so it's failed to find that. If there's also no function called print cars, it's it, it, it can't use the function print cars and the function print cars hasn't been defined here. So it thinks we're looking for an attribute that doesn't exist. And it says vehicles object has no attribute print cars. This shows that it can't use this function because the function is defined in the cars class and not in the vehicles class. So this vehicles class, because it's a parent of the cars class, cannot it, it, it can't um, inherit anything from the cars class because the cars class is a child of the vehicles class. But the cars class inherits everything from its parent. All right. Simple enough. OK, we'll do this again. We'll show one more class uh, based on vehicles. We'll call it trucks. And we we'll use vehicles as the class argument there. And we'll define print trucks self. And it's going to be exactly the same, almost, almost identical to the method defined here. OK. Print this vehicle is a truck. It has the following attributes and values. Da, da, da. And we're just going to use self dot get all dot get all. And I'm going to add a little bit more to this. I'm going to add one more print statement. So first of all, we're going to print slash n, which is the uh, backspace uh, the, uh, the new line statement just so we've got some separation and i'm going to put in capitalizations this is a truck make sure to comply with our company regulations on trucks i'll explain why i've done that in a minute but let's just make this class and we'll make a object an object of this class so we'll say truck one equals trucks and we're going to have an argument the makes going to be big rig 1.0 don't think that's a real truck and the miles per gallon is going to be something like 50 miles per gallon it's a truck you know it's not going to have great MP. It's probably going to be worse than that, actually. It's not going to have the best miles per gallon. OK, now. Let's see how that ends up, shall we? So we've got our truck and we're going to use the print trucks. So we're going to use truck one dot print trucks. Yeah, just see if it works. All right. So. It's done the same as before. It says this vehicle is a truck. It has the following attributes, values, make, miles per gallon. And then the print statement automatically uh, actually gives a new line. So it actually prints on a new line when you put print statement, right? But, oh no, sorry. It's because of the new line here. Yeah, so you've got two new lines here. And then it says this is a truck. Make sure to comply with our company regulations on trucks. So... We're assuming that trucks, that, that, that this class has been made for a company, okay? Or we should assume that. And we're going to assume that 
cars and some other vehicle vehicles let's assume we had a motorbikes class and whatever they all have fairly easy uh, vehicle registration uh, the regulations on them are quite easy there's not as much compliance that needs to be done uh, there there aren't as many legal problems uh, with operating those types of vehicles but trucks might be extremely uh, difficult legally to operate there might be different uh, regulations and such and so you're given this special announcement that this is a truck make sure to comply with our company regulations on trucks uh, because this is a special parameter you know so yeah that that's just a way to reflect that in a function right and also great this works now let's test the get all method because we want to test that that works separately for everything else and we could test set all as well but set all will also work i'm just giving you one example normally if you're testing you want to do more than this and now let's try truck one dot print cars do you think it'll work or do you think it won't work? That is the question. It does not work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because print cars is not in the truck class. That is not in the truck class. Notice that trucks, the class trucks, has inherited from the class vehicles, but it has inherited nothing from the class cars. So the print cars function will not work on anything of the trucks class, any object of the trucks class. Okay, um, that's everything for the practice. I would advise that people at home try their best to type out, you know, any exercises that we've gone through, and also to experiment, make your own classes. Maybe have a look uh, online, see what else is available uh, to, to learn about classes. There are a few things about, that differ in Python classes. Uh, when compared to Java, for example, uh, one of those is it's hard to determine or to restrict what data types are used in as arguments <laughs> in functions of classes. Uh, that can be changed, but it's not very easy to enforce in Python. Um, you might see if you look at Java that you can, you can enforce like privacy and encapsulation. Uh, of variables or of attributes of your classes you can't really do that explicitly in python anyway just just things to think about and i hope you enjoy thanks for watching